Hello, I'm Aaron Wolby, and today what I have is called the drum dial. And what it does is it measures the relative tension of a drum head at a specific point. But what do I mean by that, and how exactly does it work? Well, the drum dial is a two-part device. Firstly, we have this heavy-weighted bass here, and then this other part, which is called a dial indicator. I have a regular shop example right here, and this is a device that turns linear motion into rotary motion. So, how do these two parts work together? The weight of the drum dial presses the head down. The edges of the base are the reference points, and between those reference points is a gap, which is measured by the needle. The change in the size of the gap gives us a measurement. Before you start using the drum dial, there's a couple of things that you need to understand about drum tuning. So, let's start with one of the most important things, and that's the type of hoops that put pressure on your drum heads. The stiffest types of drum hoops are generally die cast hoops, and they deform less readily, which means if you put a lot of tension on one side, the opposing side will lift up and cause less tension on the drum head. Flanged hoops are more prone to deforming, so if you put a lot of tension on one side, the opposing side might not change as much. The hoop will just bend. Wood hoops, on the other hand, tend to be the most flexible, but they are also the most irregular, so it can be difficult to predict how the pressure is going to distribute around the hoop. The stiffness of a hoop also affects how much influence a single tension rod can have on the entire drum head. Compare this stiff hoop to a flexible hoop. So let's try this on a real drum. Here I have a drum with die cast hoops where the left and right tension rods are tight and I'm going to turn the center tension rod. After about a turn and a half, the left and right tension rods are already loose. The center tension rod has exerted a lot of influence. Now on this drum with flexible triple flange hoops, we're going to do the same thing. A turn and a half on the center tension rod and things are still pretty tight, definitely on the right side. Another turn, left is loose, right is still mostly tight. That center tension rod is not exerting much influence to the nearby tension rods. It can be infuriating. The next thing to consider is what I call tension bands. So on this drum, I've only tensioned these two tension rods and that creates a line of tension between them, and everything around them is fairly low tension. So, that creates a tension band. When tension bands cross, it causes something I call tension spots. On this drum, I have only tuned four tension rods, these two and these two, which causes a spot of tension off-center on the drum. Everywhere else is either very loose, like it is right here, Mildly loose, like it is here, and slightly loose. The next thing to concern yourself with is the bearing edge. And this drum looks totally fine, right? Well, when we put a flashlight on it, we can see that the bearing edge is warped. And what this means is that the drum head will never properly sit on the drum. There will always be ripples. You just can't tighten this out. So how do you fix it? Well, you get a surface plate, you sand it down, get that nice and level all the way around, and then you need to redo the edges on a router. You just shove it on there, spin it around, and you're done. And since you probably don't have those tools, I suggest not messing up your bearing edges because it completely ruins the drum. It can't be tuned anymore, you're toast. And of course, check any new drums that you purchase, make sure the bearing edges are good. It's flat all the way around, there's no warbles, there's no dents, it needs to be perfect. If not, send it back. With these things in mind, now we need to tune the drums. But there's still some things we need to keep in mind. Before you start tuning, get all of your tension rods so they no longer jiggle in the hoop. Just give them a couple turns, give them a wiggle, see if they jiggle. When it stops jiggling, it's good to go. And that's good enough. The classic turn the tension rods until they're finger tight, well, that doesn't work. For obvious reasons, if you look at all these tension rods, they don't all turn the same. Some of them are gonna get tight really fast and some of them, eh, they're not ever gonna get tight. You know that star pattern you probably learned to tune drums with? Well, look at these asymmetrical tension bands and all these asymmetrical tension spots all over the drum. Why would you do this to yourself? Ugh. So how do we avoid these weird tension bands and tension spots all over the place? Well, it's pretty easy. Two drum keys, turn them at the same time. Simultaneously tensioning opposing tension rods causes a single tension spot right in the center of the drum, exactly where you want it. 
When tuning the drum, you should never turn a tension rod more than an eighth of a turn, which is easy. Put your two drum keys on, keep their orientation, and turn the whole drum so the next tension rods move to where the previous ones were. So watch it again. If we keep the drum key's orientation and turn the drum, the drum key actually turns the tension rod, and we've moved it an eighth of a turn. Perfect. All this time, and I haven't even talked about the drum dial, but it's really easy to use. It comes with the spacer. You can use the spacer if you want. I don't use the spacer. I use my finger, put it near the tension rod, space it with my finger, keep it evenly spaced, read the dial, you're good to go. Check again, and all you really wanna do with this is use this to get the overall tension around the drum and make sure each tension rod is even. But if you do each of the tension rods cross, like I explained, you will end up with a fantastic sounding drum and then just use the drum dial to tweak it a bit. So I know I didn't spend much time talking about this guy, but that's because once you understand how to tune drums and make the drum head respond predictably and work with your drum hoop, all this does is tell you if you've made small errors and allow you to correct those small errors. It's, it's really good for that. <clears throat> drum tuners, the things that go by pitch, they suck. Torque wrenches, they suck. Go to AdamBowlby.com. I have a whole article explaining why drum torque wrenches suck. They suck, they're stupid, they're dumb, don't buy them. Drum dial, on the other hand, it works pretty good. So go to AdamBowlby.com where I have a text-based companion article with a little bit more information. Go to Patreon.com slash where you can support me because these videos take a long time and so do the text articles and I don't put any ads or anything in my stuff. It's all free, completely free. No annoyance. I hate those things. Forget it. I'm not doing it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have a good day. And I hope your drums sound fantastic.